Hello! For many years, the state of Florida and the United States have been facing a worrying problem where millions of invasive baboons invaded cities, causing serious consequences. Their presence not only compromises security, but also causes significant damage to the economy and infrastructure of Florida urban area residents who have had to find ways to deal with this situation. Please leave one below in the comments and join us now. Unmoving Train Baboons casually sat on the roof of the train watching the scenery. It's a funny and sad scene when a baboon even destroys a car, climbing on the driver's seat and causing damage to the car. Have you ever wondered why baboons attract human attention? The monkeys' vigorous reproductive behavior led to their population explosion, with a high reproductive rate and short reproductive cycle. McCate breeding season typically occurs from June to October, with infants born approximately six months after gestation, and each litter usually lasts from one to two children. The rapid increase in their numbers makes it difficult for local authorities to control, especially when their eating habits can negatively affect the environment. Monkeys often consume leftover human food, such as bread and fruit from passersby. Living in groups, the number of baboons in a group can vary from a few individuals to more than 100. Depending on the species and habitat, their average weight ranges from 12 to 20 pounds. But have you ever considered the impact baboons have on their health, their communities, and the environment? They are the cause of monkeypox, which causes large pimples and even leads to death. Let's explore the origin of the appearance of baboons in the United States when they were introduced to Florida in the 1930s. Initially, only a small number, but thanks to their strong adaptability and ratio with high birth rates, the baboon population has increased significantly it is estimated that the number of monkeys in Florida can reach tens of thousands. The monkey population explosion has caused many problems for residents. They invade cities and residential areas, causing chaos and creating safety risks for people. Cities are hit hard by baboon infestations, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage every year. This not only affects the economy, but also reduces the quality of life and security of the community. People may feel worried and afraid of baboon invasions, especially as they disrupt daily life and create many negative impacts on residents and tourists alike.
in Florida cities. The economic damage caused by baboon infestations is enormous. They often invade the homes of residents and visitors, steal property, and create a sense of insecurity. Each year, the tourism industry in Florida loses millions of dollars due to the impact of monkeys, especially when tourists are discouraged from visiting areas heavily affected by their presence. Areas invaded by baboons also cause traffic disorder in the city. They often appear on the streets, causing traffic congestion and creating the risk of accidents. This not only makes traveling difficult, but also threatens the lives and safety of traffic participants. This is driving the need for measures to control baboon populations and improve management of their habitats. To control the influx of monkeys, the Florida government has issued a policy allowing people to use hunting tools to kill them in designated areas. To address this problem patiently, encounters with wild baboons often take place away from farms and cities to avoid impacting other animals in Florida. Measures are taken both day and night, but hunting at night remains challenging because tracking and recovering monkey carcasses is more difficult in the tropics. Limited light conditions can create risks for hunters due to limited visibility. Each hunting trip requires the hunter to have a valid license from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission FWC, which is valid for one year and allows the hunter to kill invasive baboons. Hunters statewide are obligated to report baboon kills to FWC within 48 hours after the hunting operation concludes that reporting is necessary to control the baboon quota. Annual, however, baboon culling is a controversial solution for controlling invasive baboon populations.
Those passionate about protecting baboons often oppose hunting, seeing it as cruel and unfair to the animals. They may advocate alternative measures, such as relocating baboons to wild areas. Do you like this solution? If so, leave number 2. Otherwise, if you don't like it, leave number 0 below the comment section. Coyotes, apex predators, have taken advantage of changes in the environment to expand their range and adapt to new challenges. One of the main causes of this increase is the severe decline of natural competitors such as grizzly bears and cheetahs, as well as the loss of their habitat. The population decline of these predators creates an ecological vacuum that wolves are capable of taking advantage of. This poses a great challenge for wildlife conservation while also creating opportunities for wolves to dominate. This habitat change not only creates new opportunities for coyotes, but also poses challenges for urban environmental management and protection. Another important factor is that warming climate change in Canada makes the climate more favorable for coyotes, allowing them to adapt to a wider range of climatic conditions. This change may be an important factor behind the recent sudden increase in coyote numbers. Coyote populations have grown to about 30,000 animals in Canada, especially concentrated in areas with abundant food and shelter sources. Currently, about 60% of Canada's land area has become an ideal habitat for them. However, this also means creating challenges for people and land managers. They are animals with strong reproductive ability. Their offspring begin to reproduce at the age of two helping this species develop rapidly. Each litter of coyotes can have four to six pups and pregnancy lasts 60 days. During the first six months of life, children receive special care from their mothers to help them develop and prepare for independence. To be successful in controlling Canada's coyote population, Farmers and hunters have had to plan meticulously. This plan includes determining the ideal area and time to set traps, as well as the specific type of trap to be used.
Coyotes often occur in wild grasslands and forested areas where they live. So start by setting traps in locations where coyotes are likely to move, such as paths, trails, and foraging areas. The trap is triggered by an attractive bait, usually meat or bone, placed so that the gripper is hidden underground or in bushes, creating an effective coiled capture system. The value of these traps can be up to $50 each and can be used multiple times. In fact, over the years, this practice has been shown to be effective in reducing coyote numbers in Canada. Each year, an estimated 1,000 coyotes are trapped, a significant number that not only reduces the spread of wolves, but also provides economic benefits to the Canadian coyote meat industry when sold in the market cost between $5 and $10 per pound, generating a significant source of income. However, Conservationists worry that trapping could have a negative impact on the ecosystem. They argue that coyotes play an important role in controlling herbivore populations and maintaining natural balance. Through the thrill and excitement, Coyote hunting is not only an adventure, but also an exciting challenge. Together, farmers and hunters identify hunting areas, carefully establish schedules, and decide on hunting methods to use. This requires a deep understanding of the natural behavior of wolves, thereby creating a reasonable and effective hunting plan. The process of hunting coyotes often uses a variety of means such as traps, guns, or hunting stations. The choice of this method is flexibly adjusted to optimize capture and minimize the risk of harm to the surrounding environment. Some people believe that coyotes play an important role in maintaining natural balance, helping to control herbivore populations. What is your opinion? Please leave your shares below in the comments section. A group of hunters in Georgia, along with hunting dogs, faced a difficult situation when encountering ferocious wild boars. Faced with unexpected challenges from wild pigs in complex terrain, hunters face the risk of slipping, 
falling into fallen trees, or even getting lost in the forest. Every move becomes a new challenge, especially with the unique and wild terrain in the southeast region. As you can imagine, the wild boars in this area weigh up to 661 pounds and can run at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. In a tragic incident in Alabama in 2023, a hunter was attacked by a moor's boar. This story is a vivid image of the harshness and danger that hunters face when conquering wild boars. If you were a hunter, how would you deal with such dangerous situations? Therefore, every wild boar hunt in the Southeast United States is not only an adventurous challenge, but also an opportunity to demonstrate skills and necessary protective equipment. Careful preparation and adequate protective equipment not only help minimize risks, but also ensure the safety of each participating member. Creating memorable experiences is not only the goal of every hunt, but is also important for capturing rich and memorable memories. In the hearts of every nature lover in the North of America, states like Alaska, Montana and Idaho are always special destinations, famous for the impressive presence of wild boars. With their large size and fierce strength, wild boars in this region become more prominent than ever. These are the fascinating challenges of hunting, where their ability to move quickly makes the hunt a true challenge for any hunter. It must be noted that, even when armed, their attack can still occur at any time. Therefore, being fully equipped and carefully prepared from protective clothing to weapons is absolutely necessary. Unforeseen challenges when participating in the hunt Harsh weather conditions and the ferocity of wild boars make each hunt more adventurous and difficult than ever. In this context, learning and sharing experiences becomes extremely important to create a professional and safe community of northern wild boar hunters. Falling snow not only makes for a great photo, but it's also a difficult layer of snow to get through when you are chasing disoriented wild boars, the bone-chilling cold of frost, and sometimes hidden risks. Therefore, Hunters need to be equipped with knowledge about survival skills and keeping body temperature in cold environments. Warm clothes, waterproof shoes, and cold-proof sleeping bags will become indispensable items on this journey. On the top of a mountain or in the depths of a forest, every step becomes more important than ever. Careful preparation with adequate forecasting equipment and food is the key to ensuring safety on every hunting trip. What do you find is most important when preparing for a hunting adventure in harsh weather conditions?
Extreme weather can have the effect of preventing the growth of invasive species populations. Do you believe there is another more effective solution? If so, what do you think the solution is and why?